right, hi students. Welcome to the writer's workshop for um, the argument essay. So I wish that you were here with me so that we could, I could get your feedback at like normal, but um, we're gonna have to do it this way. So just participate on your own, right? All right, so um, in the intro, so we've gone over, I hope you've already watched the video um, about the chapter and, and hopefully read through the chapter on your own, looked at the sample papers in the chapter. Um, but here we go with our writer's workshop. So, so in the intro, here's a, a couple of things that I need for you to do in the intro is you need to explain the issue. Number one, explain the issue. So I can't say that enough. Sometimes when we are working on a paper, we have been thinking about it a lot, but the reader hasn't necessarily been thinking about it. And again, I'm familiar with these topics, right? But again, your instructor is just a stand-in for a reasonably intelligent person who may or may not be aware of this topic, right? So someone that is, you know, somewhere else and uh, should also be able to read through your paper and know exactly what you're talking about about this topic. So that's why you need to explain the issue. This will probably take about two to three sentences. So you need a few sentences to, I mean, it could be even two to four. I'll say two to four. Really depends what the issue it is and how you approach it. All right, so then I want you to explain the controversy. Meaning, why do people disagree about it? Explain the controversy. Um, that's about um, one to three sentences. Just depends on what it is, right? Probably two to three. I guess I'll say two to three. All right, um, so explain the controversy. Why do people disagree about this? So you're gonna explain both sides, kind of neutrally. Um, you're not really taking a side yet, you're just explaining it so they understand why people disagree, all right? So then you want to transition to your thesis. All right, and this takes about one to two sentences. You don't want to just explain the issue in your controversy and then go headlong into your thesis because that's confusing for the reader. They just figured out what the issue is about and now they're, they're not even there yet. You've got to start turning the car, as I like to say, toward your idea. You've got to, like, they're in, the, they're in the driveway and you're at your house, so you've got to get them from here to there. You, you're not going to just jump to your front door with a pogo stick, right? That could be jarring. So you don't want to do that. So, But thesis statement is one sentence and you need that. So in your thesis statement, one sentence, you need to tell them what you think. You need to say what you want to happen. You could give your one big idea. There are different, there are several different approaches to this, but you need to say what you want. So again, this is not just a report. Um, you know, you're not re just reporting the news, CNN, this just in, right? That's not you in this case. You have a particular position. So you need to tell them what you want to happen here. All right, so yeah. Oh, oh! <laughs> Okay, yes, oh my gosh. Okay, we're having wardrobe malfunctions with the microphone. Okay, yikes, okay. Okay, I think I got it better. <laughs> okay, great, all right. So, so again, explain the issue, about two to four sentences. Explain the controversy, about two to four, two to three-ish sentences. Ex transition to your thesis, about one to two sentences, and here's your thesis statement. If you do all that, you've got two, four, five, six, seven, uh, six to eight sentences. That's pretty standard for this type of essay. So, so that's the, the breakdown there. So um, there we go. I'm going to erase this because I, as normal, I'm gonna go from, from left to right. So last chance to write that down, I guess. Um, all right, okay, so I'm gonna give you an example on this. So I, I mentioned in the other video that the topic I'm going to do for this writer's workshop is working while in high school. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the side of against working while in high school. And the reason I decided to choose that, uh, because I can't get your feedback right now and I wish I could, 
but I just usually we vote, right? We usually vote on this, but we can't do that right now. So you can applaud on your own. We usually vote by applause. You can do that. But I'm going to take the side against it, and here's why. Because what I've experienced in the past when students have chosen this topic, I've had more students choose for working at high school. I don't want to steal your idea. <laughs> if you want to work with that idea, I want you to still be able to work with that idea. Um, and I don't want to, you know, show all your ideas and then, oh, that was mine. I, now I can't do it or whatever. No. So I want to do the opposite. And I also think that will help you to have a more informed side, uh, more understanding of both sides. If this was your idea, if you wanted to argue against working in high school, that's totally fine. You just have to have your own original introduction, not like what's here in the writer's workshop, your own original topic sentences, et cetera, okay? All right, so here we go, maybe something like this. So this would be paragraph one. Again, this would be the intro. So something like this. Okay, so, so this is just one way to do it. There are others, but something like this. Recently, parents, educators, and students have been debating over whether or not students should work during high school. So this is just beginning to explain the issue, right? So let's see. Um, Okay, so again, I'm still explaining, right? So I'm, I'm explaining the controversy. Remember I said explain the issue, explain the controversy. I'm kind of combining those here. Um, so again, recently parents, educators, and students have been debating over whether or not students should work while in high school. While some argue that students gain needed work experience uh, while employed during high school, others say that working at such young ages can cause such a young age, okay, I'm gonna erase that S, can cause students too much stress and also cause students to miss out on important uh, opportunities to be involved in clubs, sports, and activities. So presenting both sides. Um, um,
Okay, so again, I'm reading the whole thing over just like we do in class because I, again, I suggest doing this with your own paper so you can get kind of the rhythm of it. Just kind of read it out loud, see how it flows together. I am kind of, I'm, I've explained both sides, but I'm starting to turn the car, as I like to say. I'm starting to turn it toward my, toward, uh, my, my thesis, right? So the reader is starting to kind of likely get that sense. Um, so here we go on one more time. Recently, parents, educators, and students have been debating over whether or not students should work while in high school. While some argue that students gain needed work experience while employed during high school, others say that working at such a young age can cause too much stress and also cause students to miss out on important opportunities to be involved in clubs, sports, and activities. Some also point out that many working students struggle academically while trying to manage both school and work. All right, so we need to... All right. Um. Whoops, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. Uh -huh, um. Okay, this is the transition um, sentence. So I have, in fact, well, I'm still kind of crafting this, but um, in fact, while students may gain work experience by holding on a job while in high school, the loss of opportunities to connect and the difficulties with stress and poor grades are often too much of a loss for, for many students. Uh, so let's see. Something like this for the thesis. Um, this is just what I came up with to incorporate those ideas. To protect the health and well-being uh, and the futures of high school students, students should not work while dur during high school. All right, so, so we're going to have to support this, health and well-being. I'm going to focus on the ideas of stress and missing out on connection. Uh, and future, I'm going to focus on the grades, right? So I have a plan right there. So that, that's the idea. But it's also, we have the plan, which we already talked about in the intro. So again, the thesis shouldn't be a big surprise to the reader. It shouldn't be, uh, wow, where did that come from, right? So it should be, you're leading up to it, and then you have it here. I'm going to give you another sample thesis that you could use. 
sometimes it just it's hard to pull it all together and in, in, in get all those ideas in one. And I'm going to give you a sample thesis for this type of essay that could also work. Um, so here's a, another sample thesis for this essay, which could be Okay, so here's my sample thesis. It's not the one I used for this essay, but you could use it. Again, you still have to lead up to it. You still have to explain your idea, but here's the sample. Students should not work during while in high school for several reasons. So you might think, wow, that sounds really abrupt, but it's effective. You've got your basic elements of your thesis. You have your topic, students working while in high school. That's our topic. You have your idea, they should not work while in high school. And then you're stating, for several reasons. And what that's saying is you are going to develop those reasons in your essay. So that's okay. Sometimes you just can't think of it exactly. And this is fine, it's effective, it's traditional, it gets the job done. Uh, so sometimes you need that because you just can't think of it. Um, and this particularly is true when you're doing like a timed writing. And often those are argument essays. So I just wanna give you, that's my gift to you for today, uh, is this sample thesis. It's fine, it's totally effective. All right, so let's go back though one more time. I'm gonna read the intro and thesis so that we can craft the topic sentences, all right? So again, uh, recently Recently, parents, educators, and students have been debating over whether or not students should work while in high school. While some argue that students gain needed work experience while employed during high school, others say that working at such a young age can cause too much stress and also cause students to miss out on important opportunities to be involved in clubs, sports, and activities. Some also point out that many working students struggle academically while trying to manage both school and work. In fact, while students may gain work experience by holding down a job while in high school, the loss of opportunities to connect and the difficulties with stress and poor grades often are often too much of a loss for many students. To protect the health and well-being and the futures of high school students, students should not work during high school. All right, so now let's start with getting into our, our body paragraphs. So I'm gonna erase the sample thesis and this would then be paragraph two. All right, so let's go in the order that we talked about it in the in the thesis. So we've got health and well-being. So let's start with um, let's start with stress. I think I'm going to deal with stress first, then connections, um, and then finally, I think the, the one that is probably the heaviest hitting is is grades. Uh, so let's talk about that le uh, last kind of hit them with that important point there. So we're gonna talk about uh, stress. So we're gonna protect the health and well-being. All right, so again, you still need transitions. So what I find is sometimes with this paper, with the argument paper, we're so trying to get our point across, we're trying to argue logically, we're trying to argue effectively. Sometimes there are elements of essay structure that just fall away by accident, but we've got to make sure they don't fall away. So, so uh, you can use, there are a variety of different transition words or phrases. I'm gonna do the ones I consistently use in the writer's workshop just to keep consistent, uh, but they're effective, right? So first, so we're going with first. All right, so first, students. Um, Okay, I just, it escaped me, sorry. All right, so we are with, we are dealing with, we don't want them to be stressed, okay. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna rephrase it.
All right, here's our topic sentence. So it says, first, working students often have to deal with too much stress and juggling their school and work schedules, which can have a negative effect on their overall health and well-being. It looks so long, but it doesn't look long when it's typed, right? <laughs> All right, so, um, so that's our idea. So note it is an idea, so it can't be a fact, right? Your topic sentence has to be an idea. Go back to your thesis, make sure that it's an idea that supports your thesis, right? So it can't be uh, some, your topic sentence it, it, it typically it can I mean it can actually as we've talked about be anywhere in the in the paragraph but very traditionally it's number one or number two if if uh, and again it is hard because we're not in person working on all this um, if you have struggled with topic sentences in the past like many people do I would have it as sentence number one that way you know it's there you can check it off and you did it right so it's an idea. It wouldn't be, for example, like a fact would be, first, I worked while I was in high school. Well, that's a fact. We can probably verify where you worked and that you were there, right? That facts can be verified. But this is an idea that working students often have to deal with much, too much stress. Some people would say yes, some people say no. So it's an idea. All right, so we've got our topic sentence. Then you need to explain that topic sentence in about two to three sentences. So. Remember, the reader may not have been thinking about this like you have. They might have been thinking, what do you mean stress? How is it that stressful? It's just school and work. Why is that stressful? So you explain it. You're going to take a couple of sentences, typically two to three, and explain what makes it stressful. This is the part that if you guys were here with me, I would say, well, what makes it stressful? Somebody tell me, right? So think about that on your own, right, and see if you could explain that. So you might explain that it's difficult to juggle uh, both both work and school because the schedules might, conf might conflict with each other. Um, all of a sudden, you've got so much responsibility and you're... You're, it, it's hard to pack it all in. Sometimes it might be easier than others, but when you've got a lot of assignments due and then work gets busy at the same time and they're asking if you can come in when you were supposed to be off and, and it's just a very hard juggling act and then maybe there's just not enough hours in the day and you're staying up all night trying to get everything accomplished for school, that sounds stressful, right? So you might explain that, right? Explain that specifically. All right, then you need a specific example. So give a little story, if you're using personal experience, give a little ex uh, ex story about when you were personally stressed out uh, from trying to juggle uh, school and work, right? That uh, you would just give that story. Again, kind of like what I talked about, but giving uh, a, a, an actual little story about how that uh, affected you, right? If you were trying to be um, I can remember, okay, I'll give an example. I was, I was, I can remember um, when I was in college and I worked at, at this point, Hickory Farms that was in the mall, the little cheese store that's no longer there. But I worked there and I worked at Sears. And I can remember that my schedule was so tight that I had to leave Hickory Farms and I had to be at Sears in something like five minutes. I remember tearing off my uniform as I ran down the mall and changed name tags real quick, right? It was sort of stressful, right? And so, and if then you had to be at school right after that and, and you had assignments that you're frantically trying to get done, right? I might talk about that in, in relationship to school, right? That if that was stressful. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit as we go about the opposition. So again, you need to deal with the opposition somewhere in the body of your essay. You've got to mention it in the intro, which we did, but you've got to deal with it in the body paragraphs. If dealing with the opposition also supports your topic sentence, you can deal with it in one of your existing body paragraphs. But if not, if that just doesn't work out, you're gonna have to give it a separate paragraph, in which case you would have uh, six paragraphs instead of five, right? So either way, um, I am going to say we could easily deal with this um, with uh, supporting the opposition, which, I mean, not supporting, uh, refuting the opposition that says that uh, students are gonna gain uh, necessary work experience. So I would do it this way. So again, I'm gonna leave that to you to explain and give the example and think of that. But here's how you might deal with the opposition for this issue. You might say, while, in the same paragraph, I just wanna make sure that this is the same paragraph. While some may argue that um, working 
while in high school. Um, allows students to have needed work experience In fact, students have time after high school to still get that same work experience while uh, preserving their their health and well-being. All right, and then you're going to have to have evidence for it too. So, but let's talk about this. So, notice this is where I am now dealing with the opposition. I am addressing a concern of theirs. I'm addressing it specifically. I'm not talking down to them. I'm not calling them names. I'm treating it as a valid, you know, a, a, Concern. All right, so while some may argue that working while in high school allows students to have needed work experience, in fact, students have time after high school to still get that same work experience while preserving their health and well being. Again, same paragraph. I just want to make sure this is the same paragraph. I would explain that and I would give some evidence or an example of that. So I might explain it in, in again, this is going to take two to three sentences. It's going to be a longer paragraph. If you're dealing with the opposition in that same paragraph, it's going to be a longer paragraph, and that's fine. Um, so explain it in, in a couple of sentences that after high school, those same jobs will likely be there, um, that they can more manage their schedule maybe in college where they can pick and choose their classes. They have a little more liberty in that way so they can manage it better um, if they're waiting to work until then. And that, um, that being able to craft your own schedule is likely uh, you can figure out things for yourself in order to not be so stressed and to kind of preserve your well-being so you have a little more time for yourself and things like that. And if that's the case, I would, I would give a specific example of that. So um, either of, of maybe that's what you're doing now and you did wait to do that, that would be great. Um, or... If you tried it the other way, got way stressed out, had to regroup or something like that, you would want to give some evidence or an example. Okay, so just give that example. Um, and again, um, it just I'm going to look for you to ha address the opposition somewhere in the body of your essay. It can be one of your existing paragraphs. If it doesn't support your topic sentence to do that in existing body, body paragraph, then I'm going to look for you to have a separate paragraph to address it but also support your um, thesis. So I'll try to give an example of that too. All right, so we've got paragraph two. We're, uh, we, now we need paragraph three. So we talked about um, dealing with stress. The last one is grades. So opportunities to connect in high school. So this is going to be paragraph three. All right, so second. Um, All right, so this is our this is a paragraph three. It's our second topic sentence. We've got second working students often miss opportunities to be involved in high school, such as clubs, sports, or other important social activities. So that's our second idea. Supports our thesis. We mentioned it in the intro, and that's one sentence, right? So you're going to explain that. You are going to give an example or evidence of that. 
Um, and yeah, so how, how would you explain that? Again, I wish I could ask you specifically, but you might uh, talk about um, that there um, are, you know, th this is maybe the one time in life where you have this opportunity to join these various clubs, find out what you're interested in, um, and, and, you know, do these, these fun activities um, and be a part, it makes you feel likely maybe more part of the school um, if you're connected with the school and the students. Um, and this will be your, um, you know, this will be your graduating class at some point. And, and to be able to have that connection, you could explain, might be very important. And work can be, you know, it can conflict with that. So if um, if you either worked in, during, during high school and missed out on doing a lot of that, you could talk about that. If you were, um, if you did the opposite, like you did a lot of things in high school. I was on the yearbook staff. I was the editor. Yay. <laughs> so I would, there were a lot of hours I devoted to that. And if I was working that whole time, I probably wouldn't have been able to devote those hours. And that was, you know, a very, really useful and fun, right, activity. So, so it's nice to be able to have that and be involved. One of my best friends in high school, she did, she worked a lot during high school. She was extremely productive in that manner. Um, but she was not able to do any of these clubs or activities because she had like, I think it was three jobs by the time we were seniors in high school. And she's doing fine, she's, she's a great, uh, you know, very, uh, doing very well. But, but, uh, but she wasn't really able to participate in a lot of the clubs and activities because she was, you know, often at work. Um, so there's that, right? And so again, you would give a specific example and the evidence for that. All right, and if you're addressing the opposition in that body paragraph, that would be fine also. So I hope you guys have the introduction because I'm going to have to erase it as we go into our final body paragraph. So here we go, I'm going to erase that and we're now dealing with paragraph four. All right, so paragraph four, this is our last point. And it is the about grades, right? About academics. So this is paragraph four. Finally, it's my favorite, my very favorite transition word. <laughs> so again, it's always my favorite transition word because as a writer, you're like, finally, I'm almost there. Woohoo, right? And then I think it lends a seriousness, finally. Like this sounds like really important, right? All right, so finally, uh, let's see. Okay, so here's the last topic sentence. Finally, working while in high school can cause students to struggle academically, which can have a negative effect on their future. So again, that's our idea. It's not a fact, it's an idea. It supports our thesis, and you would need to explain that in about two to three sentences, and you need a specific example in about two to three sentences. So notice we're still layering, like I've talked about before, English lasagna, right? So we've got our layer of our topic sentence, we have our layer of our explanation, we have our layer of our example, right? So we're still doing that, right? And so you explain it. Uh, how could you explain that? Well, you can, you can again, it would be slightly different than the, than the paragraph on stress, but you could explain really focusing on all the assignments that, you, that a, a student would have due and how they can, um, working can cause them to fall behind academically and maybe not be able to catch up, right? So you would explain that in a few sentences, but then you need to add that specific example or evidence. So that, or that fact. So, so if you have an example where that happened to you, do add it, tell, tell the story, right? So if you had like a paper due, 
but your hours changed and you're trying to get all the hours at work in and you, you kept not having enough time to sit down and write the paper and then you didn't turn it in at all resulting in like a zero or something tell that story uh, because that's very powerful um so uh you want to give the specific example it might be something that you've researched it might be a fact uh, that you have where a study that was done about working students again then you want to add that you want to uh, give that so i i haven't mentioned yet in in the body paragraphs but i i'm going to mention it now that it is good to add some analysis for about two to three sentences, again, those are your focused thoughts, all right? So your focused thoughts on the matter, it's like your philosophy about this particular issue that you get to uh, add then. So uh, that's really good in every body paragraph. Um, I think as we wind down to like the last point, very important because this is the last time that you really get to um, tell them your thoughts on that. All right, so then I want to just give you an example of how you can deal with the opposition in a separate body paragraph. Let's say you have one of their points and it doesn't really relate to any of the um, points that you have already talked about. Then you would want to give it a separate body paragraph. So I'm gonna erase this and just try to show you how you would do that. Very similar to how I approached it before is what I'm gonna do in the example. I just wanna show you how you can craft a, a, a separate body paragraph and still support your thesis. So this uh, would be something like, um, again, I'm gonna use that, that approach. So while some may argue that working while in high school provides needed work experience. In reality, most students can get that same work experience after high school. So in this case, note that I say in a separate paragraph, while some may argue that working while in high school provides needed work experience, in reality, most students can get that same work experience after high school. That's my topic sentence. It supports the thesis, but I'm dealing with the opposition. And then you would explain that in about two to three sentences and you give your example in about two to three sentences and uh, it's always nice to offer some analysis in about two to three sentences but that would be it for that paragraph right so you would just deal with that if you do that approach you'll end up with having six total paragraphs all right so now we come to the conclusion and so let's go right here for that So in the conclusion, uh, some really important things to do for your conclusion. You need to, number one, you need to touch back on your intro and thesis. This is more important than ever because you have to convince them to your point of view, ideally, right? So you've got to remind them about what, what the main point is. So touch back on the intro and thesis. And by touch back, I don't mean repeat the thesis word for word. No, that would sound like a rerun. We don't wanna do that, but you do wanna say it again in slightly different words. And then you, you cannot give them any new information. So no new info. Um, underlining it because it's that important in this essay for, I think because our minds are so complex we can hold so many different ideas in them at the same time that for some reason in argument papers, sometimes we want to change our minds and, and give a new point or something like that. You can't do that because it's, it's confusing for the reader. The reader is with you, they're rolling along with you and all of a sudden they're like, wait, what? You changed your mind, ah, <laughs> even you don't believe this, right? Uh, so no new info, meaning don't change your mind and not support your thesis. 
Um, don't give them another point. Don't give them another story or new evidence or anything. No, no breaking news can happen in the conclusion. No, you've got to just keep it consistent. Touch back on the thesis. Touch back on your intro. You're looking for like a satisfying wrap up here. All right, and you could choose to sum up your topic sentences. This is um, optional, it's not the only way, but it is one way that can be very effective where you basically review your points again. Uh, you can do that, and that's optional. One way that I find, particularly in argument papers, that is very helpful for me personally is to really think about what is the heart of the issue here? What is underneath this? What is really at stake here? And, and sometimes that, putting that, is like kind of like a final thought. It's not new information. It's just kind of reminding your reader why this is so important. Um, that I'm, so I'm going to put heart of the issue. What is the heart of the issue? And then connect that to a final thought. It's, it's like your last chance to remind the reader of why this is so important, why it's such a, an important issue, right? So you could touch on that, on, on the heart of this issue, right? Uh, and you just want to wrap it up, you know, give closure. All right, so again, you're going to touch back on the intro and thesis. You're not going to give any new information. You're going to, you could choose to sum up your topic sentences. You, you could choose, um, this, is, this is optional, uh, you could choose to really remind your reader what the heart of the issue is, why this is important, kind of like a final thought, not, not a different thought, just final thought, and you do need to give some closure. When you finish the paper, it's a good idea to read over your paper, of course, but particularly with this paper, it's a good idea to read your intro and then read your conclusion. Make sure they match. They should match like bookends. That way you can check and make sure that you haven't brought up new points. So for the conclusion, as we normally do, you guys are going to write the conclusion to this uh, writer's workshop. So that I will post that on Canvas. I'll post the assignment on Canvas, but that is going today's Monday. Oh, wow, I hope I, I don't, I hope this is going on today. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have you, you're gonna write a conclusion for this writer's workshop. I want you to write the, um, to t look at your intro, read, 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 look at my intro, let me say it that way. Look at my intro, look at my thesis. Um, you're going to write um, a conclusion about four to seven sentences. I'm going to put that down about four to seven sentences that does all these things. It touches back on the intro and thesis, does not have new information. You could choose to sum up the topic sentences. You could choose to kind of really give a final thought about the heart of the issue. You do need to give some closure. I will post on Canvas when that's due. I've got to figure that out, okay? So, but that's going to be an assignment. That's what you're going to do. Um, and that's going to, I think, help you to write your own conclusion. All right, if you have questions, of course, let me know. And this has been fun. <laughs>